Hi everybody, it's me again, Joe the Coding Maniac. And in the last video, there weren't any code samples, nor was there code available on GitHub. But this time, there will be. In this video, I will show you how you can easily tune the crap out of your model using Python and scikit-learn. The model we will be using in this video is again the model from the video about sentiment analysis, but slightly changed. So, if you haven't watched the video yet, now would be a good time to go for it. I will explain a few things about this model in this video so that you should be able to follow along, but I won't go into much detail. For that, please watch my other video. All right, now I have been talking for a while, but what's the thing tuning your model and how does it help us making better predictions? In machine learning, we are building models and try to predict certain values. And while building our models, there are parameters called hyperparameters, which kind of control how our model works. So some of those parameters are the learning rate, number of epochs to run, and the stopping criteria, but there are many more. The performance of our model changes depending on these parameters. So, our goal is to choose them wisely, to make our model perform better, and in this video I will show you how you can achieve this. So, now let's get this going and let's dive into the code. Alright guys, so, um, yeah, let's paste some code. First, I will paste the model from the video about sentiment analysis and then we will talk about it. All right, guys. So let's talk about this code. Um, yeah, first of all, there are the imports we will be using throughout this tutorial. And the next thing is basically importing our data. Um, we have to do some little transformations here so that this is actually valid JSON. Um, after we have our data in um, available as valid JSON, we will create a data frame out of it. And yeah, that's it for loading the data. Now we have to do some pre-processing. So for this, first of all, we filter all the ratings um, that have uh, all the reviews that have a stars rating of three. Why do we do this? Because for reviews with a star rating of three, we can't be that sure about whether it's a positive review or it's a negative review. So we just eliminate them. And the next thing we do is we add a new column to our data frame and call it sentiment. This will be our target vector and the values with which we populate this uh, column is basically um, if the star rating of a review is four or five, we will set true in this uh, column. And if the rating is one or two, then we will set false. All right, guys. So that's for the data pre-processing. The next step is we will split our data into a training set and a test set. And with this done, we can actually build our model. So guys, basically it's the same model as in the, the video about sentiment analysis, but this time we will use this pipeline class. I also use the pipeline uh, class in the code of the video about sentiment analysis, which I uploaded on GitHub. So have a look at that. It's just a shorter and more convenient way of building your model and it gives us some more easy way to access certain parameters for the later parameter tuning. But we'll come to that later. All right, with this done, we can run this code. All right, that's done. Now, with this out of the way, now let's come, uh, let's go to the fun part. So now we will use cross-validation. I'll again paste some code in here. All right, now we will check our 
models performance with cross-validation. So what is cross-validation? What does this mean? So we will be using k-fold cross-validation with k equal to 5. So this basically means that we will split our training data into five parts and the algorithm of the cross-validation will build and run our uh, model several times and it will each time pick a different part of this five as a test data and it will choose all the other parts as training data. So it will iterate through this. So in the end we will get several scores. This k-fold algorithm is very helpful especially for parameter tuning since you should never tune your parameters on a test data set since this will make you vulnerable for overfitting. You should always use a validation set for parameter tuning and when done with the tuning then afterwards use the test set to check the actual performance of the model. But splitting your data into three sets, one for training, one for testing and for validation, reduces the amount of available for training the model. So this is where cross-validation comes in and because you don't have to provide a specific validation set because it's kind of picked out of the training set and used, you know. So if you want to, to, to know more about overfitting, my last video addresses overfitting and tells you ways how to avoid it. So check it out, guys. All right. Um, as I already mentioned, we will get several, several values as scores. In this case, we'll get five because we chose k as five, which we will did in with this parameter. That's the reason why we call mean on that. So we get an average accuracy to, to evaluate our, our model's performance. Also, we will print the standard deviation just to see how much variance we got into uh, in our data. All right, this is our baseline. We will run this code. All right, guys, this is the result. We have an accuracy on average of around 94% and the variance is like pretty small. So it's okay. So this is our baseline now. And now let's see uh, how to tune the parameters. Okay, first of all, we need to check what parameters exist and which can be used, which can be tuned by us. We do this with the method getParams. The parameters that are important for us are uh, on the bottom and contain a double underscore, which are basically these. So those are the parameters we are able to tune. I won't go into detail what they stand for, check the documentation for that. But as you can see, Thanks to using the pipeline, we are able to tune every component of our model. So we are able to tune the vectorizer, we are able to tune the TF-IDF transformer, as well as the classifier. That's a nice thing, right? All right. Now, with that in mind, let's actually tune our model. So we will use the class grid search CV for this. What this will do is it will use cross-validation to calculate um, our model multiple times with all parameter variations that we will feed to it and tell us the parameter combination that performed the best. So for this to happen, we need to tell it which parameters and values to test. This is done by a dictionary where the name is the name of the parameter and the value is a list of values to try for this specific parameter. So just let me paste some code in. I picked these parameters to tune. As you see, I'm tuning parameters for the vectorizer as well as for the classifier. With this dictionary set up, we can create an instance of the grid search CV class and start fitting it to our data. But be careful. 
uh, building all those models takes a lot of time. So the more parameters you choose, the longer it will take uh, to tune uh, the model. I have the latest MacBook Pro and this setup takes about one to two hours on my laptop. So when it's done, we can see the best achieved accuracy score and the parameters that made this happen. So we will print those things here. So basically just now let's run this and then we will, I don't know, go for a walk or something and yeah, see the results afterwards. So I'll start this now and now we have to wait. So this is done now and we have an accuracy of 94% as before roughly. And those are the parameters which gave us the best results. So now would be a good time to fit a model with those parameters and see how it is doing on the test data. So this is now the model which is filled with the data provided by the cross-validation parameter tuning. Stop words is none, which is the default. So yeah, we just keep it. And now we can run this. All right, now we have a second model because the first one we made up here. And now we can check this and try it on the test data. We will fit the models, I'll paste the code. And we will use the model which we didn't tune and we will use the model which we tuned and make predictions with both, both of them. Yeah, and see which one performs better. So now I will run this and so there is our result with the tuned model doing just a bit better than the not tuned. So for, for this model it doesn't make that much of a difference but I'm pretty sure that your models will benefit more from it. So these results are from the test data set which those two models ha have never seen before. So these results are unbiased and valid. So this is the final result. You can take this as a play project. You can find the code on GitHub, take the code, try around, try to fine tune those parameters and try to come up with a better, with a better result. So play around and have fun with this. So parameter tuning is a mighty weapon to have in your arsenal and you should use it to make the best out of your models. If you like this video, please comment, subscribe and follow me on Facebook to get notified as soon as new content is available. So far, see you the next time.